the content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. On November 9th, 2001, Catherine Knight was given the harshest sentence possible under Australian law. Catherine was the first woman ever in Australian history to be sentenced to life in prison and have her file stamp never to be released. Catherine's crime was the vicious murder and mutilation of the body of her de facto husband, John Price. At the murder trial, her ex-lovers and even family members came forward to explain the violence that this woman is capable of. Catherine was betrayed as this cruel, violent, vindictive woman who harmed everybody that came into her path. Yet to look at her sitting in the dock, you would think that she could just be anybody's mother. This mild, meek looking woman who hit this facade of being an absolute monster. So it would be on Tuesday the 29th of February in the year 2000 that Catherine would actually murder 44 year old John Price. There's been a murder. As she put it in her police statement, the couple had had pleasurable sex in the bedroom of John's home. And then afterwards, Catherine pulled out a butcher's knife that she'd hidden in the bedstand and inflicted the first of 37 stab wounds on John. What? 37! John would have seen the horror in Catherine's eyes when she inflicted that first stab wound. He managed to successfully fight her off and make her run for the door, but then Catherine managed to pull John back into the house and then stab him a further 36 times. Once John was dead, Catherine skinned his corpse, taking off the ears, scalp, nose, eyes, neck, the lot. Catherine had worked in abattoirs her whole life in a variety of different positions, and this is why she was so skillfully and expertly able to skin John in the way that she did. But once the skin was removed, you better believe Catherine was not done yet. She continued to defile John's body by chopping off his skin head and throwing it in a cooking pot on top of the stove. She then chopped up and peeled some vegetables, chopped some meat off of John's butt, cooked it all up like you cook a steak, and then put it out on the table for John's son and daughter to eat. What the fuck is wrong with you? The pure enjoyment that she got from killing and torturing John puts it down as one of the cruelest women in the annals of Australia's criminal history. During the trial, one of Australia's foremost criminal psychologists, Dr Milton, was asked to give his findings to the court after interviewing Catherine. Dr Milton said that Catherine definitely had a borderline personality disorder, but knew exactly what she was doing on the night that she murdered John. Looking back over Catherine Knight's life, there are so many red flags and indications that she was one day going to do something terrible. However, over the years, people just got used to her erratic behaviour and just put it down to her being the way that she was. In 1974, at the age of 18, Catherine got her first job at a slaughterhouse where her position was to decapitate pigs. It was around about this time as well that she would meet and marry her first husband, David Keller. But from the very beginning of the marriage, it was a very violent and unhappy one. On the couple's wedding night, Catherine strangled David near to death because he didn't perform to her sexual expectations. From that day on, as you can imagine, David was very weary of his new bride. One time when David came home from work just a little bit late, she met him coming in through the door and hit him in the head with a hot iron. He had iron scorch marks right down across his face. After being interviewed by the police, she was sent over to a psychiatric hospital for further observations. She told anybody that would listen these tales of war or how her husband attacked her and abused her. Yet, her husband David Keller remembers it completely the other way around. She was the one that would attack him as soon as look at him. David Keller recalled at the murder trial that Catherine was unpredictably violent. This was a phrase that would come up again and again and again when anybody in the murder trial described Catherine. David Keller also recalled another scene to the court where one day he woke up to find Catherine astride his chest holding a knife against his throat. Just sitting there laughing saying how easy it would be just to kill him right there and then. But very soon after the marriage would fail and Catherine ended up moving back to her hometown to live with her grandmother. So in 1987, Catherine found her next lover. This time it was a divorcee called David Saunders. According to David's ex-wife and many others, he was a nice, polite man and he was a man that was in no way prone to violence. But just to show David exactly what she was capable of and that she was not to be crossed, one day when he came home from work, she slit the throat of his eight-week-old puppy right in front of him. What? Needless to say, soon after, the relationship didn't really last very long. And just before Catherine broke up with him, she vandalised his car and then took an overdose on sleeping pills. She was then once again admitted to a psychiatric hospital for further observations. 
So it would be three years later that Catherine would eventually return to society and in May of 1990 she found herself in the arms of a man called John Chillingworth. John was a recovering alcoholic and he does admit to hitting Catherine once. The time that he did was when she had just pushed him too far. She had slapped the glasses off his face and then broke his false teeth while they were still in his mouth. What? So needless to say, the relationship, it didn't last long. Catherine would then meet John Price. John was a bit naughty though. He'd had an affair for two years with Catherine before he eventually broke off his marriage. John was the father of three children and when the marriage broke down, the youngest daughter stayed with the mother and the other two kids went to live with John. You've got to know that John was well aware of Catherine's violent past and her violent tendencies, but still he moved her into the family home with his children in 1995. It has to be said though that John's children really liked her. He was making a lot of money working down at the mines and life was really a bunch of roses for them. In 1998 though, they had a fight over John Price's refusal to marry Catherine and the retaliation, she videotaped items that John had stolen from his work and then sent the videotapes to his boss. Okay, but why though? Although the items that John had stolen were out-of-date medical kits that he'd got from the company's rubbish tip, he was fired from his job that he'd had for 17 years. You cock-juggling thunder cunt! So needless to say, John kicked Catherine out of the house and the news of what she had done spread around the town like wildfire. But it would only be a few months later though that John Price and Catherine would get back together again. Oh, for fuck's sake! Although this time he outright refused to let Catherine move in with him. But even so, the fighting got even worse and worse and worse. And all of John's friends said to him, as long as you are with this woman, we want nothing to do with you. So on the day that John died on the 29th of February in the year 2000, in the afternoon at work he had told colleagues that if he didn't come into work the next day, that it would have been because Catherine had killed him. His colleagues and friends begged him not to go home and to just take the kids and go to a friend's house, but he was terrified that if he didn't go home that Catherine would murder his children. So when John arrives home, he walks in to find that his kids aren't there and finds that Catherine has sent them over to her friends for a sleepover. He then spent the evening with the neighbour before going to bed at around 11pm. Then Catherine arrived at John's house just shortly after he'd gone to sleep. She sat and watched TV for a very short while, then got a shower and then went into the bedroom and had sex with John and fell asleep. At 6am the next morning, a neighbour woke up to find that John's car was still in his driveway. Now this was highly unusual. So she was already on high alert at this point. It would also be at the same time that his colleagues had noticed that John hadn't come into work. Being very concerned, one of them drove out to the house just to see what was going on. Both him and the neighbour were knocking at the front door and getting no response. So they went round to the bedroom window to knock there to see if they could get a response and noticed that there was blood everywhere. They immediately alerted the police who got to the house at around 8am. The police broke down the back door to find John's skinned body lying on the floor and right next to him was Catherine who'd again taken an overdose of sleeping pills. So according to the blood evidence, John had managed to flick on the light after the first bathroom had been inflicted on it and successfully fight Catherine off. It was then when he was running for the door that Catherine had pulled him back in and then stabbed him a further 36 times, a lot of them hitting vital organs which meant John bled out and died. It was shortly after this that Catherine took John's bank card, went to an ATM and took out a thousand dollars and then went back to the house. And it would actually be several hours after John had been murdered that Catherine decided that she was going to skin him. She then decapitated him and cooked up parts of his body serving the meat with baked potato, pumpkin, zucchini, yellow squash, cabbage and gravy. She was preparing to serve his body parts to his children. A third meal was partially eaten but was then thrown out on the grass for unknown reasons. It's speculated that Catherine had made this dinner for herself and had bitten off more than she could chew and then just threw the remains into the back garden. John's head was found in a cooking pot with a load of vegetables. The pot was still warm and was estimated to be at around 40 or 50 degrees Celsius, indicating that the cooking had taken place earlier in that morning. 
Catherine had initially said that she would plead guilty to manslaughter because she couldn't remember anything that had happened, apparently. Apparently she developed just this complete amnesia about murdering, skinning, and cooking a man. when Catherine, just a day later after saying she plead not guilty, decides that now she's going to plead guilty. The judge, Justice O'Keefe, was willing to accept the guilty plea, but wanted to make sure that Catherine was aware of the consequences of pleading guilty. So he then ordered an overnight psychiatric assessment just to make sure that Catherine actually knew what pleading guilty meant. Catherine's legal team wanted to use the defense of amnesia and disassociation. This is something that is held up by a lot of psychiatrists, but that said, the psychiatrist that assessed her still deemed her sane to stand trial. So although Catherine's guilty plea was accepted, she still refused to accept any responsibility for what she'd actually done. And at the sentence hearing, her legal team requested that she not be present when the details of the case were being talked about. This was refused. But then when Dr. Tim Lyons took the stand and started describing the skinning and decapitation and all the nasty things that Catherine had done, she became absolutely hysterical and she had to be sedated. So on November 8th of 2001, Justice O'Keefe pointed out that due to the nature of Catherine's crime and her complete lack of remorse, it required a very severe penalty. He sentenced her to life imprisonment and refused to fix a non-parole period and ordered that her papers be marked never to be released. This was the first time this had ever been imposed on a woman in Australia's history. Unbelievably though, in June of 2006, Catherine appealed her sentence claiming that life imprisonment without the possibility of release was far too harsh for the crime that she'd committed. Needless to say, her appeal was rejected and she still sits in prison to this day. Well that's going to do it for today guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. All our social media links are in the description box, please feel free to check them out. And until next time, good night and God bless.